Hello, thank you for joining me. This is my second video I've made during lockdown from my house. Um, last time I talked to you a bit about train spotting and you know what it is and what people do and what you know just how, how you'd be a train spotter really. This video we're going to talk about something else to do with railway enthusiasts and that's called track bashing. Now track bashing basically is travelling on track for the fun of it. You know not necessarily because you need to get to the end of the line but just because you know you want to. Now I like to when I track bash I do try and you know get out at the end of the line or wherever along the line and have a look round but I do also there have been days where admittedly I have literally gone to the end of the line and come straight back just to tick off the track. Now the way I kind of do this is I have this this is my older book um, and this is my current book. Now as you can see they're both a bit you know, um, looking a bit worse way around the edges because these are real workhorses. These go out every time I go on the train with me. And what I do for home, I have my neat copy, which I don't touch much, and it you know stays nice and um, neat looking and doesn't get all worn away around the edges. Now, as I go track bashing, what I do is I um, I tick off the lines I've I've done. So these books are basically like a road atlas, but of railways and. Um, they show all the main lines, all the heritage lines, all the metros, all the tramways. This is obviously of the UK. So let's find an area to start on. Um, where should we start? Okay, the border of England and Wales. Now, I don't know how well you can see that, but you may notice there's a few different colours. Now, yellow is my kind of introductory thing. That means, so this is the Cambrian line from Shrewsbury over to Aberystwyth. It means I've been on it on a multiple unit. So, you know, that's diesel or electric. Now, some lines, so just I'm going to show you this one north of here, north of Shrewsbury, up towards Wrexham. That is green, that means I've done it on a loco haul train. So I know the one and only time I've done loco haul north of Shrewsbury was on Wrexham and Shropshire, it was on their penultimate day. Wrexham and Shropshire are a great little train company, it ran from London, Maryland to Wrexham, but unfortunately, their trains um, people just didn't use them enough. But they were loco haul, a class 67 and three or four Mark 3s. So they were great, but unfortunately they had to stop running. So I went and travelled on their penultimate day. I did use them before that though. So if it's green, it means I've done it on a local train. Now, there's also quite a lot of pink stroke orange. That's when I, that's just the colour when I go over them. That is steam. So I've done steam from my hunt lift. It goes off the page, but around the Cumbrian coast as far as Pufueli, when I used to do steam specials um, around the Cumbrian coast. I did that on um, 4MT. Um, seven six oh seven nine i think it was and then the next year i did it on a black five so i've done that with steam then of course all the little narrow gauge railways most of the heritage railways i've done with steam there are some heritage railways which i've done either with a multiple unit or on a diesel local train so that's kind of what track bashing is now again i take it that wherever i go i track bash so that's the main lines of britain when it comes to um the smaller lines, so the heritage lines and miniature railways. I've got these books here. Now these aren't maps, it's just really a guide to all the miniature railways. Um, so what I would do, if I've been to one of these miniature railways, I'd class it as done. Now this is where we kind of overlap my Miniature Railway Britain series. Those of you who watch the Miniature Railway Britain series will know it's my ambition to visit every single one of these railways. When I say that, I, mean, I will visit every heritage railway in the UK, um, but I'm kind of focusing more on miniature railways at the moment. This book, Little Puffers, has a mixture of miniature and narrow gauge, so again, I'll do them. So that's it's a form of track bashing. So you might say go on the Romney Harbour Dimchurch Railway, and um, you'd say go from Hive all the way to Dungeness, round the loop, and back. And to me, that's track bashing. Um, Back on the main lines, there are some where it gets more complicated because when you get into freight only lines, so let's just have a look. I'll show you Manchester here. There's some red lines, they're freight only lines around Manchester. Now, I've done them on rail tours. Rail tours are probably the best way to do these freight only lines. Another way you can sometimes do them is trains get diverted, so um, you, you might go on the train and they're doing engineering work so the train goes a different route and it takes a bit of freight only track. Some of these freight only lines, or in fact most of them, are often very short. They might only be you know, a quarter of a mile, it might be a curve. So an example of um, what was a freight only line at the time that I did is at Didcot. So you've got the Great Western Main Line and then you've got a line north to Oxford. And then you have trains from London that go, to, um, as if they're heading from London, they go to the right of Didcot Railway Centre. 
forming one side of the triangle, but there's also another side, so trains coming south from Oxford can head towards Swindon. That's known as the Foxhall Curve, and that is a freight only line. But I've done that on an HST when they were diverting HSTs over the Chiltern line. I went to Swindon on HST and, and I did that bit of track, so that's a way of getting to do the red freight only lines so you know it can be done i'm i'm confident that i will do every passenger line in britain as for the freight only lines you know i take them as and when i go i'm not going to go out my way to go on them but i do go on some of the rail tours you know to get those sections of track and um if i there has been a time where i have gone on a train like when i went to swindon purely because it was being diverted and also i just wanted that time i wanted to do an hst on the chiltern main line so um that, that's how I get those lines done. Now, when I go abroad, I've got a whole series of other ones. I've got one of France, one of Spain and Portugal. Now, in these, I have done, compared to the UK, very little amounts. France, I've done, you know, a fair amount. Well, I say a fair amount, hardly anything. I've, I've travelled through France quite a lot, but I've done a few main lines, one or two branch lines. Germany, I've done odd bits, like I've done all the hearts, and I've done a few narrow gauge round, lines around Dresden, and, um, you know, one or two other bits in the Cologne area, but I've I still sort of only scratched the surface. And Germany, there's just so many railways. Whether I'll ever get them all done, I don't know. Um, Austria, some amazing railways, but again, I haven't done a huge amount. Um, Slovak and Czech Republic, formerly Czechoslovakia. Again, I've not done a lot, although I have done Prague by steam. So somewhere in here, there's some track that I've done with steam. I've done steam in Germany, a couple of mainline tours. Now, this one I find most interesting, Southeast Europe and Turkey. So when it comes to former Yugoslavia, some of those countries are so small that it's quite easy to do them. So I haven't been to Kosovo yet, but I probably could do the whole of Kosovo uh, as a rail network, although it's a bit unreliable, I've been told. But Montenegro, you've only really got a line north from Montenegro to Belgrade, a line south down to Bar, and then a branch line up to another town. So I could do Montenegro network quite easily. Bosnia, Herzegovina, well, I've done from Tuzla to Dubai and down to Sarajevo. I haven't done up to Banja Luka and I haven't done from Sarajevo down to Mostar on the coast. So, although I've done a few freight only lines in Bosnia on charter trains, um, as I mentioned in my other book, in my other video about my book, the train spotting book of this area, because it includes industrial steam. So I have done some freight only lines there. So that that is basically what track fashion is. Now there is another form that I don't really get involved in, but some people do, and you know they they really enjoy it, and that's great for them. Um, they're nicknamed the buffer kissing lot. Basically, they'll have a train, say, on a heritage railway, and it will do every bit of track. Now, I'm really just worried about saying doing station to station. So say if there's four tracks between two stations, I'm not particular. I would just say once I've done it, I've done it. Unless you get a situation, say, like north of Watford, the fast and the slow lines on the West Coast Main Line take separate tunnels. So I would say, yes, I need to have done the fast line tunnel and the slow line tunnel. But some people will do every single bit of track. And I, I mean every single bit of track, whether that's on a miniature railway or a heritage line or on the main line. And the way the reason they're called the buffer kissers is because when they get when the train gets to the end of a bit of track, they will all walk through the carriages right to the very end. So, you know, they are doing as much of the track as possible. Now, if that's what they enjoy doing, then great, you know, good luck to them. I hope those who want to do every every single piece of track rather than every route, I hope they get to do it if that's what they want to do. You know, but I, I'm more just worried about doing every route. So occasionally, like, another place would be somewhere, say, like Manchester Oxford Road. There's a bay platform that kind of, the main lines are sort of going in one direction. It sticks right out like that. So I once went on a train, it went into bay platform. I was quite happy with that. And another example I can think of in the British Isles, not in Great Britain, but at Dublin, Houston, there is another platform that's kind of away from the station. So if I ever went onto a train into that platform, that I would consider a new bit of track. There is also, and I've done most of the track in Dublin, it's at the Phoenix Park Tunnel, which is like a link line, which goes um, comes off the main line just before Dublin, and it goes through to Glass Nevin Junction, which is on the Sligo line, and there are a few passenger trains. So next time I'm in Dublin, I've got to go and do that bit of track, and then I've done all of Dublin. I haven't done all of Ireland yet. I've still got to do the suburban lines around Cork, and I uh, haven't been to Westport, Ballina, or Sligo yet. Northern Ireland, Northern Ireland might actually be the country, the first country, where I do every railway, because all, the only bit of railway 
main line I haven't done is the Port Rush branch, Cold Rain to Port Rush, only five miles. That's the only bit I haven't done. So, um, you know, or Isle of Wight, I know Isle of Wight's not a country, but I have done, because that's fairly easy. You've only got the Island Line and um, the Heritage Line, the Isle of Wight Steam Railway. So I have done all the Isle of Wight. As of yet, there isn't a country that I've done every railway in, but it would be easier on some of these islands. Even the Isle of Man, I've not actually done, I've been to the Isle of Man, but I've not actually done the whole system because I've not done the whole of the Steam Railway. And um, nor have I been to the two miniature railways. There's the Kroger Valley Railway, which is private, has occasional open days. There's also the Orchid Line. I'm hoping to include definitely the Orchid Line, maybe the Kroger Valley in a miniature railway Britain series, because it's a British Isle, so it counts. So um, watch this space on that one. I can't say when that will be. Um, but yeah, so islands, although they're not necessarily countries, they would be quite an easy place. Or I'll tell you the easiest place to do it, well, it'd be hard, but once you've done it, it'd be easy. It would be the Vatican City. That is the world's smallest state railway. It's basically a branch off Italian railways into the Pope's back garden. A few years ago, they did do a charter train out of there. So if I'd been on that train, I'd have literally got on it. And after about two minutes, I'll be in Italy and I'll be like, right, that's it, done, Italian state railways. I don't know if any of the um, people who want to do every bit of track have actually managed that. I'd be very interested to know if somebody has. But yeah, the um, Vatican State Railway is probably one of the hardest to do, but it would be, it is the shortest, it's the smallest state railway in the world. And when I do all this track bashing, and again, when I go to um, cities where there's trams, I will try and do the whole tram network. There's quite a few places like that, well, like London. I've done every passenger railway in London and quite a few freight ones, but I haven't done every railway in London. There's one or two freight curves I haven't done but when it comes to to um big cities with trams well some cities have such a small network so like toulouse in the south of france there's only two tram routes so I've, I've done them i haven't done all of the metro in toulouse even though i could have done but i only had half a day and i wanted to see the cathedral as well so i kind of had to um you know weigh it up i thought right i'll do the trams because they're above ground and i prefer trams to metros but i won't worry about the whole metro because i do want to see the cathedral uh, but then bigger cities like budapest i've done quite a lot of the trams i've done all the metro in budapest i've not done all the trams because it's, it's it's quite a vast network but i will i will do it one day hungry setting second city debrickson i've i've done it all because there's only two tram routes so again track bashing really is basically exploring track but the great thing i find about it is because i've got other interests it takes me to other places so when i go to debrickson in hungary i'll do the trams but then i'll have a look around the city and go in the cathedral and do all the non-railway stuff so um if i'm either with my girlfriend or my friends who aren't railway enthusiasts you know I, I i do try and make it so that i don't you know they don't get too bored but um there's quite a few friends of mine and members of my family who have had rare bits of track but they perhaps don't realize it in the same way i do i've effectively got a virtual cv for friends and family of where they've been and i'll say to them oh you've been on that rare bit of track and they're like oh have i okay cool so um that's basically what track bashing is so hope you enjoyed this video thank you very much for watching and um hopefully soon we should be out and about you know track bashing and visiting miniature railways and all sorts of other places um so thank you very much for watching please do feel free to like subscribe comment I've got at least one more of these indoor lockdown videos, but it won't be about railway. So watch out for that video to see what I'm going to tell you about that on that one. It'll be another one of my interests. So thank you very much for watching. Goodbye.